In this video, I'm going to be talking about torque with a wrench problem and a seesaw problem. The first question says, what is the maximum torque applied if a man can push with 220 newtons of force on a wrench with a 32 centimeter radius? And also, how much torque is he actually applying if he pulls at an angle of 25 degrees? So the torque formula is force times R, which is the radius or lever arm, times the sine of theta. Now, the greatest value you can get from the sine of theta is a sine of 90 degrees pulling or pushing perfectly perpendicular to that radius. So for our first one, um, all you have to do is basically take a force of 220 newtons times 0 0.32 meters because the original problem says 32 centimeters. So 32 divided by 100 gives us 0 0.32 meters. And if it's the maximum force, then it is applied perpendicular um, to the handle of the wrench, which would just give you one. So we don't really need to put the one there. I'll go ahead and put it anyways. And then if you multiply 220 times 0.32, we get 70.4 Newton meters for our torque. Now for the second part of the question, it says how much torque is he actually applying if he pulls at an angle of 25 degrees. So in the picture over here, I show that 25 degree angle. So if you've ever pushed on a door at an angle or close to the hinges, you would notice that it's a little bit harder to open because you'd either one, be um, decreasing your lever arm or your radius, or two, you would be applying that angle which would decrease the force being applied to twisting or rotating that object. So for this one, we would still use 220 newtons and we would use that same lever arm from earlier, 0.32 meters, but then we would also put in sine of 25 degrees, which is going to decrease that overall torque. And if you find the product of those three numbers, you would get a torque of 2975 Newton meters. So you can see that greatly decreases the amount of torque that you apply in the wrench if you do not apply that force perpendicular. Um, now, if you're taking a look at the angle based on a diagram, you would either see this 25 degree angle or you could use this angle over here, which would be 155 degrees, which is the supplement of that angle. And if you did use a supplement of that angle, um, it actually wouldn't matter because if you use um, the sine of 155 degrees, that is equivalent to the sine of 25 degrees. So anytime you're taking a look at an angle um, from this imaginary horizontal line over here, so you'll still get the correct answer whether you put in the 25 degrees or the 155 degree angle. Now for our second question, we have um, a man who's sitting 1.5 meters from the center. And on the other side, a 35 kilogram child is sitting 75 centimeters from the center. What is the mass of the second child if they are 1.4 meters from the center? Now, whenever you're plugging in a radius or lever arm, it's always going to be from the axis of rotation. So the axis of rotation is right over here in the center. So we don't really have to worry about that. And it's going to be the same thing as our previous formula, which is um, the force times lever arm times the sine of theta. Now, because of how gravity works, our FGs are perpendicular. So we don't have to really worry about that angle. So the force for each of the people on the seesaw is just going to be mg, mass times 9.8. So for the man, we have 60 kilograms times 9.8 for the force. And then for the lever arm, it's 1.5 meters. And on the other side, we want the torque to be equivalent because as you can see by the picture, it's balanced. It didn't specifically say that, but it's not tilting one side or the other, which means the amount of torque on one side is the same as the amount of torque on the other side. So we know that um, one of the kids is 35 kilograms and we would multiply that by 9.8 to convert that to a force. And then 
that first kid is 0.75 meters from the center. Again, if it's 75 centimeters, we want to divide it by 100 and convert it to 0 0.75 meters. Um, in addition, we want to make sure we add the torque of the second child. The second child has an unknown mass, which we'll call M times 9.8 and then their distance from the center is 1.4 meters. So from there, um, it's fairly simple. All you have to do is um, go ahead and drop that 9.8 um, and simplify it a little bit. And then you would take 60 times 1.5 equals 35 times 0.75 plus M times 1.4. Do a little bit of algebra from there and then you got your answer. So I went ahead and multiplied the 60 times 1.5 to give me that 90 on the left side of the equal sign. And then on the right side, 35 times 0.75 gave me 26.25. And then we had our unknown mass times that 1.4. So I subtracted the 26.25 from both sides, divided by 1.4, and we got our final mass of 45.54 kilograms. So anytime you're doing some sort of balancing problem, um, you want to make sure you may have the torques equivalent on each side of the fulcrum or the axis of rotation. Um, in this case, we had one person on the left and two people on the right. There could be many combinations, one person on each side, two on one side, three on the other, whatever the case is. If it's something that's sitting on there, the force is going to be mg, which is mass times 9.8 times the lever arm, the distance from the center. And then from there, you'll probably do a little bit of algebra to find an unknown distance or mass. So I hope that was helpful in helping you understand torque being applied at an angle and in a balancing problem. Thank you for watching and listening.